Maybe I'll take a shower twice a month. I wow. I barely ever brush my teeth. I barely brush my hair. And I have always been like that. Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Sanagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone that wants to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at our website, OPLshow.com, or send us an email directly at OPLpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and quick few notes before we get started. If you guys want to receive bonus episodes while helping support the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash OPL show to become part of that community and get those bonus episodes. And if you guys are starting to shop for some holiday presents or you just want a new fun game for yourselves, don't forget to check out the trivia party game that Joe and I created. It's called Pay the Price. It's perfect for game nights, makes a great gift, and we want to give listeners 15% off. So if you head over to paythepricegame.com and use the code OPL at checkout, you'll get 15% off. Now, let's get started with today's episode. Today, we're speaking to a woman who has ablutophobia, which is an intense fear of cleaning, bathing, and washing. And I think for this guest, kind of an overall fear of bathrooms as well. And we've covered a lot of phobias on the show, but this one seems extremely inconvenient, I guess I'd say. So we're super curious to learn more. And as always, we've got the guests on the line to tell us all about her experiences. So first off, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. My name is Madeline. All right. I guess she's not anonymous. There we go. I don't care. (laughs) Awesome. So, you know, to start, I think, you know, for most of us, the bathroom is a place that we have to interact with daily. And a lot of us, you know, actually enjoy it, whether it be showering, cleaning, all the other fun things that you can do in a bathroom. So can you describe this feeling of fear that you have towards you know bathrooms and and cleaning yourself and when it started of course so it's actually really interesting because i didn't realize that i've always had this innately in me until i was actually reaching out to you guys because there was an incident when i was 19 um i have seizures and when i was 19 i was in the shower and I ended up having one and falling and covering the dr- the drain. And um, my mom, it, I was in the bathroom for so long that my mom was like, okay, this is odd. What's going on? And she came to find me and she found me passed out, drowning. And I had no air, like I had no oxygen to my brain for so long that I ended up having stroke activity. And I was in the hospital for a really long time. And then Ever since then, I needed somebody to be in the room with me, in the bathroom with me when I was showering or I would try to do it as quick as possible. Um, I actually used to shave my head and like cut my hair really short. I used to like, and I still like will wash my hair out of the bath. Like I'll like bend my head over, wash my hair really fast. And then um, I'll wash my body like another day or um like I'll jump in the shower real quick I keep the the shower curtains open and I keep the bathroom door open all the time no matter what but um I realized that this is something that I've always kind of dealt with and I just never realized because I never showered every day I would always shower like twice a week maybe like I used to get made fun of a lot um And people don't really understand it. Like they joke around and they're like, ha, good one. Um, But it's a real thing. And I just want to kind of bring light to it because I feel like we normalize fears that are like common, like, you know, bugs, heights, you know, Mm -hmm. anything like that. But we don't really realize that you could have a fear of anything and even things that are so normal, quote unquote, that people do every day or like spend a lot of their time, like you said, a lot of people, you know, shower to calm down and it eases their anxiety. And, you know, being a female, a lot of women take really long showers and it's like a running joke because like we shave everything and, you know, do all these scrubs and like face masks. And I just, I don't do any of that. (laughs) So how, you know, I mean, it sounds like there was a traumatic experience that kind of like led to this, but, you know, 
can you recall even before that? I mean, the way that you're talking, you're saying, you know, anyway, you haven't really been one to shower like all the time, but was it the, the traumatic experience that you had the reason for this or even before that you're referring to as being a time where you're like, I wasn't really into that anyway. Um, even before that, now that experience like really brought it to light and made it a lot worse and like really intensified it. But even before then, I remember being really young and I would just like go like in the ocean or I would go like I would run around sprinklers. I would always be outside. I would never really bathe. I remember my mom used to like, she would tell stories all the time and say that like, cause I have an older sister and she's the complete opposite of me. And like, she loves like bath showers, all that stuff. And, and my mom used to always say that I would have to like, she'd fight me to like, to wash and get clean. And, um, and just going to the bathroom itself. Like I remember being really scared of toilets, like, when I was really young, like especially automatic toilets, like I used to go to the bathroom outside like a dog. Um, and I remember my mom used to like have to take me into like the bathroom and like sit me down and like really have to like sit there and help me through this. Even when I was really young, like, like I don't remember, but like she tells me when I was like, you know, two, three, four, five, like toddler, a little older. And even when I was growing up, teenager, like I never took a shower every day, never knew people took showers every day until recently. Mm. And like, it was always something that I had in me and I don't really know what it is or what it stems from. I've always been a very natural, like hippie type, like, you know, girl. And I've always been like that. So maybe something innately in me was just like oh like what is this weird technology like i just want to go in the bushes like i don't know <laughs> well that's interesting if if that's kind of the lifestyle that you're comfortable in and you also have this fear um but you said in the email i take a shower maybe once a month i barely brush my teeth i hardly ever wash my face unless i wear makeup which isn't often so is is that accurate to your kind of day-to-day -day or I guess month-to-month -month currently? Yeah, um, I definitely, maybe I'll take a shower twice a month. I, wow. I barely ever brush my teeth and the funny, and I don't wash my face. And the, the funniest part is, and I call it like caveman style and that it works for me because I've never had a cavity. I've never had acne, like not ever one pimple. I don't think I smell. No one ever tells me like I, and I don't wear, any types of deodorant. I don't wear anything with fragrance. Like I don't, I barely brush my hair. Like I, it's just like, I've, and I have always been like that. And it's so funny because my sister is way more of like a girly girl. Like she does her makeup every day and her hair and, and all this stuff. And I'm just like, if I could avoid that at all costs, like I'll, I wear makeup maybe once or twice a month just if I'm taking pictures for Instagram or like if I'm going out and I want to like look nice but for the most part I'm happy with the way I look naturally and mm -hmm. thankful that I have really good skin and I don't really have to worry about it that is interesting because I, I you know I don't wear a deodorant either like there it's very rare for me to wear deodorant it's because I really don't have I, I like rarely get bo which is a strange thing uh but i i stopped wearing deodorant like a while ago for that reason uh and also like i don't really get acne the only acne that i get or i get like pimples like around my lips because of like sweat in my beard or whatever just like you know gets right mm -hmm. there but i never really got it on my face and i never wash my face either with soap uh, so like I'll wash it with like water or whatever, but I don't put soap on my face. I like rarely do that as well. So it is interesting that you're saying that because I kind of have like the same theory of like maybe putting all of these things on your face and these scrubs and these like, you know, oils and stuff. Maybe that is possibly damaging while also helping at the same time. I don't know, but like, I, and I have no science to base that off of either, but it just was a thing that I kind of felt. So it was very interesting to hear you say that. Um, but f brushing your teeth, you're saying you only, you don't, you brush your teeth like once a week or something and you just don't get cavities. No, <laughs> yeah. I've, um, I like to 
what I like to think about is, okay, so like when we're like toothbrushes and toothpaste and like mouthwash and soaps and shampoos, like when was that invented? Like 50, 100 years ago? And how long have humans been alive? And we've been alive this entire time and have done, have lived lives like without having any of these things. So I feel like it's more of a psychosomatic thing where it's like, oh, it's so normalized now. It's like, oh, we need all these things. We need all these masks and face washes and scrubs and people, especially females, like being a woman too, spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on all these special things, all these like special toothpaste and, and mouthwashes and I've never had any issues and I feel like it's more of a a mind over matter thing where it's like oh yeah like I just live as if none of those things were invented like I live as an actual like cave woman <laughs> and I've never had any issues and I feel like that's why because a lot of those things are really bad for you have a lot of really bad metals have um harmful chemicals and now of course they have all mo like more natural dupes but they're really expensive and they don't really work as well and i just feel like i just don't think about it that often and have never had any issues and are you like i mean i totally agree with you i mean so much of this is just it's it's with the, the a consumer in mind you know how can we get people to buy this or if they have this product they need this product to enhance that and you know, obviously people spend a ton of money on these things. Uh, I guess the argument that someone could say is like, yeah, sure. Humans have been around for hundreds of years or, you know, millions of years, but, um, it's like life expectancy hasn't always been the same or things like that. But you, you're saying like, you've never had cavities. Like, are you still going to doctors? Are you still kind of checking in and just know for a fact, like I'm healthy and I can't really find any negative consequence from this lifestyle? Um, I haven't gone to a dentist in quite some time, but I haven't, I don't feel any pain or have any issues with like my teeth or my mouth. And I feel like it's almost as if it's like we, it ends up being weaker. It's like, I don't know if you know, like, um, it's like if you take melatonin to go to sleep every night, your body will stop making the actual hormone melatonin. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's kind of the same thing where it's like if we rely so heavily on these products to keep us like clean and to do all these things for us, it actually makes our body rely on these certain things and stops us from actually creating that good bacteria or those oils or those things that we naturally create and that we've been creating for as long as we've been alive. Now, of course, I don't care what anybody else does. I know that I'm in the minority and that's fine. Like, I don't expect, I'm not saying like to, for people to like not bathe. Like, I don't care what anybody else does. Everyone live their life, but I just want to bring more light to it and normalize the fact that you could have fear of anything, even things that are like things people do every single day. Mm -hmm. So what would, you know, how, if you, I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say, but like, if you, like on a summer day, if you were out and it was hot as hell and you just like sweat a lot, you'll just kind of just chill with that and it doesn't give you like any sort of acne or anything and you'll just go days like that without showering? Yeah, um, I've been a horseback rider my entire life. And if I go in like the ocean or like on the beach, if I if I'm outside, if I'm exercising or dancing or whatever, it's like I and I sweat. It's like once my sweat dries, I don't think about it anymore. So I might change. I'll probably change my clothes. But for the most part, like um, I don't ever think like as long as it just dries on me because it takes me like it would take me a really long time anyway for me to actually be like okay I need to it's like a whole thing where I need to like hype myself up and normally like I would try to take a shower in the morning or like the beginning of the day so that if anything happens throughout the day to make me anxious or to like affect my mood then there's no way then I would ever like jump in a shower at night um mm. so if I it's like I plan my whole day around it. Like, I'll be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to take a shower today. And my family is so used to me by now. They're like, 
congrats like (laughs) (laughs) um and and i'll plan my whole day around that and sometimes won't do anything like that'll be my whole day like okay that's like my my like i was productive today i took a shower and um but for the most part if i i'm not i don't feel like i'm really sweaty you know i'm i love the cold and so like when i'm in the heat i'll sweat but like once it dries i don't think about it anymore and that's just always how i've been like i won't i won't notice anything except if like my scalp gets itchy and then but that takes like weeks and then i'll be like okay once my scalp's itchy it's like it's time well and i was gonna ask that before like what is the reason why you would shower like is it just like okay enough time has passed or is there a specific reason why you feel like now is the time to to finally shower um Usually once my scalp starts to get itchy or once I start to, to feel like a little itchy, I'll do it. But I feel like it's mostly just because it's so normalized. Like I don't, it's more so of like me kind of caring what people think. Like I don't want people to think like, oh, I'm literally so disgusting. That's like I, cause I'm very open with my life with things that have happened to me. Um, you know, I'm an open book and I feel like people think it's a joke and like will think I'm kidding and it's not and I'll if I get itchy or if I feel like okay like if my family is around and they're like you know when's the last time you shower like you should probably like jump in the shower like I'll be like <laughs> fine <laughs> if the, if that pressure wasn't there or you know the fact that it is you know so normalized like you said or you might be worried about what people around you are thinking you could easily go the rest of your life you think without showering um i don't know it depends i mean if i was like okay i'm gonna go full hippie and never wear makeup never do my hair like never put any product or like never style my hair at all like stop shaving because that's like i bought an electric Mm -hmm. razor so i shave a lot like out of the shower but still it's like you don't get as close with like an actual razor so it's like if if i went like full on hippie and like maybe when i'm older and like i have a family and i don't have to worry about like you know meeting a guy or anything like that then maybe but for the most part and um also shower outside like my dad Mm -hmm. built me an outdoor shower uh when i was living at home and the next place i live like once i actually get my own house i'll definitely like make an outdoor shower and that makes it a little easier because it helps me visualize being under a waterfall but Mm. for the most part like i'll go i want to live on a lake so like if i live near a a fresh body of water like that'll be my my Mm. way of bathing so is it more of a because obviously you know we've heard about the traumatic experience that you had and that would you know freak anyone out uh is it more of a phobia or is it just a, you know, a lack of interest in bathing? I think it's both. I think I always had a lack of interest, but then when that experience happened, it created such a phobia for me that like, I, it just extremely intensified it, like made it like hundred times worse. Like I, used to it wasn't until like this year that I and I'm gonna be 26 and this happened when I was like 18 or 19 that I started showering with nobody in the room like I used to have to like my sister or my mom or somebody would sit on the toilet or like sit on like like sit in the bathroom and be there for me and like talk to me or like put something on to like distract me um And then they would be there when I, and I would just jump in and then jump out really quick. And like I said, I keep the door open, the shower curtain open. And like, I would just have like someone there with like a towel and just talking to me the whole time. So it truly is an intense fear that, you know, you've had. And then obviously the trauma that kind of elevates that. I guess that's what's so interesting is it's, it is sort of both because that phobia is very real. And I can even relate to what you're saying of, I guess just the anxiety buildup you have now, like if, if you have something that's a focal point of your day or something that you're nervous for, you know, like you said, like sometimes that could be the only thing you do 
throughout the day. And that's very real when you have something you're anxious about or looking forward to. It's so hard to focus in other areas of your life because you know that thing is happening. And um, that, you know, I think just shows that level of anxiety as well that, you know, you kind of have, even though you've, you know, you are clearly now pushing yourself to at least do this once in a while. Um, but it's like, it's cool also that you've just embraced this lifestyle or like you said, maybe innately you just kind of had that in you. So it's, it's like on one hand, there's this very real phobia and on the other, it just almost suits you or it almost couldn't have found a better person to have this phobia in a way. Yeah, it definitely wasn't that huge of a transition because like I said, I was never someone I used to take like baths sometimes like after horseback riding, like I would take like Epsom salt or like detox baths with like Epsom salt, baking soda and like ginger to kind of help me with like my sore muscles. But for the most part, like I, it wasn't really that huge of a difference for me because I was never one to you know, stand in the bathroom all day doing a skincare routine or putting a full face of makeup on. Um, I never really showered that often or like took many baths. So for me, it's like, you're right in the way that it's like, it couldn't have been like happened to a better person because it wasn't that big of a lifestyle change, which I'm thankful for. But of course, it's like, it's still so taboo. And it's just hard to kind of talk about for well, people right. to really yeah. understand and that kind of brings it back to what you said of you know opening the door to these type of conversations and talking about fears that aren't the common ones we hear about like you said like clowns or heights and but you know that also is it's a good point because it kind of shines a spotlight on this that this is a real phobia that other people have and maybe not everyone who has it is in your position or so you know, accepting or able to embrace a lifestyle that doesn't require you to enter a bathroom that often. And maybe there's people who do have this phobia that, uh, you know, wish they didn't or are trying to take steps to kind of like overcome it or shower daily or things like that. And I could, you know, imagine that being really hard for someone. Yeah. Um, I never really like took any steps to, to try to change anything. I mean, I was seeing a therapist for a while, but I have so many other things that I've experienced and like so many other like traumas and stuff that um, it never really, it wasn't specifically for that. And, you know, I don't try to, to be anybody different. Like I'm myself. I don't try to be like, okay, I'm going to conquer this. Like I'm not that type of person. Like I'm a very laid back, like I'm not a type A person at all. I'm not someone that's super like motivated and determined and like, like I'm going to, fight this like I'm just like you know what like it is what it is then I'm not gonna go into the bathroom every day and like sit in the shower and be like I'm gonna try to do something different I'm just like you know what like when I feel like I like I'm okay to shower when I feel like I need to shower I'm going to but for the most part like I'm not gonna force anything and you know obviously this is a personal decision so is is there but is it a belief that you would probably pass on to like children one day and kind of like raise, you know, kids that way of being like, you know, this is a more healthy way or I don't know what, how you would kind of explain it, but is that something that, you know, would be a possibility? Um, uh, I feel like I, well, it's funny you bring that up because I always wanted to be a mother ever since I was really little and I want to have a lot of children. And I feel like, um, when they're young, like, and I live, if I live like, you know, on a lake or have a natural body of water, I'll probably bathe them there or have some sort of something outside. But once they get a little bit older and they can make their own decisions, it's like, I'm not going to in like I'm not going to imp- try to impact their life with how I feel like I'm just going to let them do their own like live their own life and be their own person and once they develop their personality and what they want out of life and like if they want if they love to bathe and shower and they find relaxation in that then that's awesome I'm not going to be like don't do that but if they end up being more like how I am that I'm just going to embrace that and let them be individualized and who they are and that's how I feel about everybody like I'm this I'm not the type of person to like 
instill a movement. Like I let everyone be who they are and I expect and hope people to let me be who I am, whether you agree with it or not. That's has nothing to do with me, but I'm not going to change who I am for anybody else. With that said, do you feel like you've been judged by people in your life because of these choices? And how do you deal with that, if so? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. I mean, I've been bullied out of three schools. I ended up having to be homeschooled when I was in high school because of medical reasons and just the stress of just being bullied and just growing up. Like I never went to college and I don't really have like that many friends or really any friends. And if I do bring it up, people don't like how open I am because it like freaks them out and my vulnerability freaks people out. And people are always like, like, are you okay? Or if like I joke about something, like they'll, they'll be like, like, this is too heavy. Like you're too much. Like I, and when it comes to something like this, people always think I'm joking and think I'm like kidding around or like, I'll make a joke about it. Like, Oh, like I'm a caveman. Like, and people are like, you're kidding right like you don't actually just shower like once or twice a month like that's disgusting and i'm just like like um this one guy that i was talking to was like don't tell people that like nobody wants to know that i'm just like if you don't like if you're gonna be rude to me like honestly how i feel and i'm a sagittarius i don't know if you know anything about zodiac signs but like we're very open and honest and blunt and i'm just like if like I'm going to be who I am and talk how I want to talk and say what I want to say. And if you don't like it, then cool. I don't want you in my life anyway. So I'm glad we got that out of the way as fast as possible instead of me wasting time pretending to be someone I'm not. And then like years later being like, Oh, like we don't even actually get along. So I feel Mm -hmm. like, um, you know, I probably should be a little more like, and I'm working on like, toning myself down and not being so open and like keeping some stuff to myself. And this is one of those things is like, nobody really needs to know about that. Like, unless you're following me around all the time, it's like, there's no way for you to really know because I look clean. Like I don't look dirty. My hair is never greasy. Like I said, I don't get any pimples. Like I, so you, there was no way for you, for people to actually know. So I started keeping it to myself way more because it's like there's you don't need to know so I get judged way less but there's definitely times where people are like haha like good joke like that's funny but like you're not actually being serious and I'm like uh yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean I I mean I you know I think it's it's you know, I think it's admirable to be like, you know, this is who I am and that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like whatever works for you. I mean, I, I, you know, shower every day. I like to shower, but you know, I guess that's my prerogative because also for me, I mean, I think there is effects for me that maybe you don't have, which is the same thing for me with the deodorant thing, because people look at me when I tell them that they're like, what bro? Like you don't smell, you don't, whatever. I'm like, no, look, take a whiff. Like I just don't <laughs> like, so why am I going to wear it if I don't smell? Like I'd rather just like smell like nothing. Then I smell like some mm-hmm. like crazy old spice thing. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So I like for you, if there is no repercussions for it and you don't kind of have like, it doesn't give you pimples, you don't smell, you don't, you know, whatever. And you have your own beliefs like, yeah, I mean, do do whatever, you know, works for you. It doesn't mean it necessarily like works for everyone because I know people that are like, if I don't wear deodorant, I fucking smell like shit the entire day. And I'm like, yeah, I, if that happened to me, I definitely would use deodorant like every day, but I don't. Uh, and that's why I just choose not to do that. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's, it's kind of like, you know, whatever works for you. It is a little like shocking to hear mm-hmm. because I like... I've never really heard of this before where, um, you know, you, you wouldn't smell a certain way or something would happen. Like your skin would kind of break out. Uh, if, if like, I'm pretty sure that would happen to me if I didn't shower for an extended period of time. Um, but if it didn't, then I I mean, just going based off of the deodorant thing, like maybe I wouldn't do that shit either. (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, uh, I, we appreciate you coming on and, and being so, uh, open and honest with us. Um, as a Sagittarius uh, would. Uh, <laughs> not course. that I know anything, but you know, you said it, so I believe you. Uh, but yeah, we appreciate you coming on and talking to us and being so open about it. 
Of course. Like, um, it's funny because I know somebody that showers three times a day. Like, I know people that are on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. And, and like I said, I'm not saying, like, don't do this, do this, don't do that. Because everyone has their own life. Like, I'm not, like, instilling anything. But I would hope, like, my hope is that if I don't do that to you, then don't do that to me. Like, if you don't agree with something, like, I'm not affecting you at all. Like, especially because I don't even smell. So it's like, I don't have any, there's no effect. So it's like, I live my life the way I want to live it. And, um, and that's just how it is. And I just feel like that's just something that's been innate in me my whole life. And it's interesting that that would happen, that that, um, traumatic experience would happen while I was showering to like really bring it out in me but who knows I probably would be in the same position regardless even if that didn't happen of course that made it way like that that intensified it and gave me a real reason like hey this is where I could pinpoint it to for it like that's where it started but when I was writing the email I was like wait I've never liked bathrooms I always would go to the bathroom outside or like just sit in the sprinklers or want to be in like a natural body of water and that's just always how I've been and I just have this like hippie old-fashioned lifestyle and then I just think about how we lived before all this stuff was invented and it that like comforts me in a way and just makes me feel like you know it is what it is if this is my life I get to choose what I want to do day to day and moment to moment and no one else can do that for me so if this is the life that I want to live like there's people out there for everybody like there's a group of people like they say no thought is an original thought so there's people that are like this too like I just need to find them and then have people that are similar and and then like then I just live a happy life just as anybody else would with people that are similar and you know, some people go out and drink and party and whatever. And it's like some people live off the grid and like, you know, grow their own food. And Mm -hmm. it's like, everyone's different, but there's people out there for everybody. Yeah, totally. And that's, you know, that's super inspiring. And that's a great takeaway. And I know we're talking about showers and brushing teeth and stuff. But you know, that and and it just applies to so many things you know like you said there is someone for everyone we've definitely learned that through this show you know whether it's a partner to live life with a support system family friends someone to talk to whatever it may be and you know no matter what i think what's inspiring is it's it's clear like i know we've we've discussed the phobia and the the choice for you to live this way like you it just seems like you have really figured out the life that you want to live, how you want to live it. And you don't want to change that for anyone because, you know, you keep saying innate, like it just seems like you're very in touch with this is what I want. This is what I feel to do anything differently would be untrue to what I really want and what feels natural to me. And that's awesome. And, you know, no one can take that away and definitely have no doubt that you'll kind of end up carving out, you know, the life that you want and you'll be bathing in a lake soon enough. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And of course, it's like, it wasn't easy at first. And it was something that I had to really when that experience happened, I was actually, I was all packed to go to Indonesia, I was supposed to do a a volunteer trip in Bali. And it happened the night before and I had to cancel my trip and I was in the hospital for a long time. And I remember feeling so upset that all this happened because I was supposed to be in Bali and helping like these people and all these things but then I just you know it takes a while and of course it's you have to train your mind to look at the positive and be more positive because we live in a very negative dramatic world and for me it's like okay I believe that everything happens for a reason and who knows it's like the plane could have crashed or like something could have happened where it's like I could have been in way more danger like maybe that help like saved me in some way and you know I've become I've had a lot of time and a lot of years to really get used to this type of like the way that I feel and all these things and by now um I am the person I am and you know and I attribute that to not never really going to school not really having 
um, a lot of friends or going to work. Like I was always very sick. So I was, I was alone a lot and that's how I figured out who I am, the type of person I am, what I want to do, like what I want to be. And I didn't get really brainwashed. Like I feel like you can easily do when you kind of jump into that, like school work party type of lifestyle. And yeah, like I said, like nobody, I don't care what anybody else does. But for me, it's like, I feel like even though it was really difficult and this whole experience, like it's not easy and it's definitely very taboo like it's not normalized quote unquote but if I could open up the door with my vulnerability and help one person like that's all I want to do with my life is to be able to help people and use my nature my open nature and the type of person that I am to be able to help people feel more comfortable with who they are and if this can do that then of course like that's all I want is to just shine a light and normalize certain things because there's definitely people that deal with this that are in a worse state than I am because I had a long time to deal with it and move through it. And of course it still affects me, but I try to think of the positives and try to think of like, you know what, like it is what it is. Like, this is how I feel, but there's other ways around it. And, and, you know, it just takes time for, that mindset to grow after you go through like all the other like all the traumatic experiences the the denial all the the pain the trauma like once you move through that like there is light at the end of the tunnel and that's with everything with anything but I feel like it's better to feel these things and talk about it and shine light on it and move through it and speak to release and then you could just live your life without having these things haunting you all the time it's like I like to say like um you can only turn your head so much before you break your neck and it's like if you keep moving your head away turning your head away from these things that are affecting you negatively these traumas these um certain phobias or things that affect you and you keep just pretending that they're not there it's like it's only going to get bigger and bigger and worse and worse until you can't ignore it anymore so I like to look at fears and this sh stuff right in the face and be like you don't control me I control me and I'm gonna see it and move through it and it's really difficult it's not easy but I would much rather be in this position and feel crappy right now and go through it than be 50 60 70 years old and regret and be like oh, I wish I just knew who I was or lived my life a different way or, or I wish I dealt with this earlier. So, you know, as right now, like I'm 25 and if I don't live a normal quote unquote life of a 25 year old, but what is normal, especially now it's like everything mm -hmm. is changing. So I love who I am and I'm grateful that I love who I am. And if I can open up, the door for anybody else to look at themselves or their family or friends and be vulnerable and open up a conversation about things that they struggle with, then my job on this planet is done because that's all I want to do is help people. Wow. Very well said. And, and, you know, I, I think I speak for Greg and I, we're both like super supportive of that, you know, mentality. So, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, we, we appreciate you coming on and just being like super open and honest with us and just owning it, you know, <laughs> usually people would probably look at it like, you know, sort of strange, but the fact that you are uh, just like, yeah, this is who I am is, you know, it's really cool. We meet a lot of people like that and it's always equally as inspiring every single time we kind of hear it. So again, thanks for coming on and, and talking to us uh, and we really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Um, it's funny because I'm part of your Patreon for the basement yard. And when you went over the phobias, I was like, <laughs> wait, there's a name for that. Like, I, and that, that's actually what made what um, made me email and like actually realize all these things like deeper and deeper because I was like, wait, I literally have that. Like, yeah. I it's so true. And um I just never labeled it or never knew there was like an actual name for it. But I mean, there's a name for everything. So thank you guys. <laughs> and just for 
the support and just for getting people's stories and showing that there's all different types of people and everyone lives a life and it's just everyone is an individual and it's fun to be an individual instead of just you know lumping into the crowd so I appreciate you guys yeah thank you and thank you for adding your story to the mix of course all right, All right. Have well, a uh, have a good day. Thank you, you too. See you. Before we get to our final thoughts, I want to tell you guys something. When I got married, I made a promise to my wife that I would cook more. And luckily, thanks to today's sponsor, Green Chef, I've been able to keep that promise. Green Chef is a meal kit company that makes eating well easy. Plus, they have plans to fit every lifestyle from keto to paleo to vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or if you're just looking to eat a more balanced meal. I've been using their carb-conscious meals recently, and it's absolutely delicious. Green Chef allows you to skip the long lines at the grocery store, and their recipes are easy to follow. I love that you get fresh, hand-picked veggies and premium proteins. Plus, the variety of options is always changing, so it never gets boring. And you guys can head over to greenchef.com slash OPL130 and use the code OPL130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. That's a crazy good deal. Go to greenchef.com slash OPL130 and use the code OPL130 to get $130 off with free shipping and enjoy Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Guys, it's 2022, and if you've made any New Year's resolutions this year, it should be to have clean and shiny balls all year round. Yes, I said it, clean and shiny balls. And the best way to make that happen is by using Manscaped and joining the 4 million other men who trust Manscaped. And with our exclusive offer, you can head over to manscaped.com and use the code OPL for $20 off and free shipping. This year, take your package to the next level with their Performance Package 4.0 and the brand new Ultra Premium Body Wash. The Performance Package comes with the signature Lawnmower 4.0, and this electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin, if you know what I'm getting at, and their advanced skin-safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on those precious nuts of yours. Also, ladies, this is an amazing gift for any man in your life, so this isn't just for the guys out there. And Manscaped has a ton of other amazing products included to keep your balls looking and feeling great, so go check those out. It's time to kick bad ball hygiene to the curb. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code OPL at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com with the code OPL. It's a new year, so no pubes in 2022. Right, guys? That's not really how I expected that conversation to go. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, I think it makes sense. Because like I said, I mean, I like I said earlier, I don't really wear deodorant like that. Do you wear deodorant every day? Um, I do. Natural deodorant. See? So, but I don't. I, I don't wear it every single day. I, I do it on very, I do it on occasion. I did hear at one point that a lot of deodorants are like bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Except for like the natural ones, native, native so, promo uh, code OPL. There you go. Um, but yeah, I ha- so that's all I have in my apartment is literally the native. They sent it to me, but like also like I know at least I'm not putting like crazy stuff into my armpits because yeah. I feel like that's a weird spot. Um, but anyway, whenever I tell people that, they're like, "What? It, what, what?" So hearing that from her, I, you know, obviously immediately my my, my reaction is like, "Dude, mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like how how can it be?" twice a month that you take a shower and you don't there's no ramifications for that but i know how people look at me when i tell them that like yeah i don't really wear a deodorant like that that like i could tell you right now the last time i wore deodorant was months ago like months ago i have haven't worn it and i go to the gym every day like i've you know i exercise regularly so like i'm boys out here sweating but like i shower after that Every every day, uh, but I'm I'm I shower after that. Like I don't let yeah. sweat like dry on me. But that's probably only because one, it's icky. I don't like it. But also, I get pimples. There's ramifications for that. So I find it hard to believe that you could just like be sweating and you know just normal day to day life and like you know you're eating food and you're doing whatever and there's nothing like no you know. 
I believe her when she says no. I mean, I, I mean, I believe her too, but I don't. I don't know. I guess it's just so easy for that to fall under like, oh, this is an alternative lifestyle because it's just so against or su- such the opposite of what the average person does, you know, for her. But I know it's cool. There's like two sides to it, and you know, I guess what it is with her is is like she said, it's it's her mentality of. I'm not going to let this own me. Like I, I control this. And I guess it helps that she see that there's like some sort of predisposition, predisposition to like not needing to shower that much. So it kind of fit with her, but you know, she just owned this phobia and like found a way to not just live with it, but embrace it in a way that seems like it makes her happy. Like she has a very specific lifestyle that she's happy with if she didn't have the phobia i i mean i wonder if she'd be showering every day or if she'd still be like this i don't know maybe that's like a chicken or the egg kind of question but you know it just seems like she found this lifestyle but i i can see a lot of people judging her obviously which she said like she's been bullied she she's been judged um it's and like she said everyone almost seems like feels like she's joking and i could see i could sense like why people would think that because it's just so it's, like it oh seems, i shower once a month you yeah know? it seems a little wild to say something like that even yeah. when i tell people about the odor thing but i don't think it's that big of a deal people will think i'm joking or mm-hmm. they like won't believe me and i'd be yeah. like no i'm for real i just don't wear it so I, I like i get it i mean obviously it's a little different because there's just like deodorant brushing teeth brushing teeth to me right is why i thought that like it was just natural like teeth just like get fucked up and fall out kind of thing, you know? I don't know, man. That's weird. I want to... Like, how are your teeth not just jacked up if you're, like, not brushing them? I guess it depends on what you eat. I mean, I don't know. There's there's so much about that, too. Like, there's a bunch of people in history who, like, didn't brush their teeth or, like, ate apples and said that it it was just as good as brushing your teeth. I don't know. But our follow-up should... Yeah, I don't know. Our follow-up should be going to the dentist with her with cameras. How's your teeth? So she can (laughs) prove to everyone... If she has no cavities, damn. We'll, we'll also, like, just plaque money. buildup is like, you know what I mean? You would think. You would think. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, regardless, it's like, that was cool. Like, we do a lot of phobia. Well, I don't know. No, I mean, actually, it seems like a lot of people with phobias, I don't know. She She seems like she was the farthest along out of people that we spoke to that's just like, I'm going to have this forever. There's, I don't really need, there's no work that I'm going to do to like try to fix this. I'm just going to create my lifestyle around this phobia and just own it and embrace it. And what this phobia causes me to be afraid of uh, are actually not things that I even want to do, or I've, I guess, proven to myself that I don't need them and that you know, it doesn't have an effect on me. And I hope right. that's true, like health wise and everything, if you know, we have to take her word for it. But Yeah, and and you know, fortunately for her, I mean a lot of people don't have this with like phobias and stuff. They're just like deathly afraid of things. She didn't really have an interest in it to begin with, you mm-hmm. know? Like, who's to say that you don't have arachnophobia? Uh, but you just like people like just don't like spiders generally. You know yeah. what I mean? The different I don't really know the line that you have to cross to be like, no, I'm fucking like like I have a phobia of spiders, you know what I mean? Um, but a lot of people don't like them anyway. And then if you find out that like, Oh shit, I actually have this phobia. Your life doesn't really change at all. So if you don't have an interest in showering stuff and then something traumatic happens to you where it's like, I am fucking terrified now of this thing. then it's like, well fuck that altogether. Especially yeah. if I'm not having any sort of like physical ramifications for that, then like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I guess, you know, bro, if you told me that I didn't have to brush my teeth, and nothing would happen, why would I do it? Maybe it's the truth. Maybe big big dentistry is it was, just, it was big dentists. You know, big, big dentists. Case. They just want our money. They want big the insurance. Big dentist. Dude, that's crazy. Big pharma, man. Big dental. They're really, they're, well, the toothpaste is what's making our teeth fall out, folks. Big, Which shower, how, big shower products. Like, big, sh- big shampoo. Big, big shampoo. Johnson & Johnson. Dude. <laughs> it's all connected, guys. It's a conspiracy. Um, but yeah, uh, interesting episode. Um, let us know what you guys think. 
Um, but for anyone out there that wants to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, like I said earlier, you can hit us at on our website, uh, OPLshow.com, or send us an email directly at OPLpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, follow us on Instagram at OPL Podcast. Become a patron at patreon.com slash OPL show. And if you want to pick up a copy of our party game that we promise is super fun and uh, a little bit wild, head over to paythepricegame.com and use the promo code OPL at checkout for 15% off. Yep, and that is all. See you guys next time.